Oh, thank you so much for that. I trust our dads out there just felt that love and um, that you have a good day with the family today. And um, that you're spoiled just in that special, special way. Although you, most dads are spoiled every day, just in that little more extra spoiling for today. Um, and just before we go into praise and worship, I um, would like to just read this for our dads. It's from Ephesians 3. And may God, out of his glorious riches, strengthen you with power through his Spirit in your inner being, that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith. May you be rooted and established in love, have power together with all the Lord's holy people to grasp how wide and how long and how deep is the love of Christ. And may you know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all fullness of God. May God, who is utterly able, doing immeasurably more for you in all that you can ever ask or imagine. That's for our dads out there. I truly hope that you embrace fatherhood, that you take daddyhood and you run with it. But know this, that you may be that family's father, but our spiritual father loves you more than you will ever know. Good morning, and it is so good to be with you on Father's Day, and yeah, you know, I'm a dad myself. I should actually be having off and have the preaching, but here we are, doing what I love doing, bringing God's Word to God's people. Now, this is week three of You've Got This. And in week one and two, we, were looked, we looked at, at you know, all those trials, those tribulations, all that adversity we face, and um, we came to the conclusion that the Bible says, in this world you will have trouble, but I have overcome the world, says Jesus. So if we got Jesus, we're able to go through whatever we face. And um, this was based on, a, on um, a, a series that I listened to by Carl Lentz from Hillsong Church in New York. And part three today, I tie into some of these things again. So part three is going to be a little bit different to, to what we've discussed in the previous two weeks. I want to show you how to get to a place where you can start seeing beyond the problem and sort of inviting God into it. Now, if you look at the disciples, it seems like they themselves initially didn't know how to deal with issues. When, when they were on the sea and the boat and that storm came up, they go and they wake Jesus up. And I think in hindsight they would have realized, but perhaps there was a better way. Um, perhaps there was a way we could have let Jesus sleep, but we could have got God involved in this issue anyway. And um, I believe there is a better way. When you're in the storm, I believe there's a way that you can get through it by bringing the right things into it, the right attitude, and bringing the person of the Lord Jesus Christ into that situation. So I want to use a portion of scripture that I have preached on so many times, and I don't want you to now go into screensaver mode when you hear which verse it is. I want you to stick with me on this one because there's new revelation, there's fresh insight here. And it is that portion of scripture from Acts 16, 23 to 31. Let me just get it so I can read it to you. So it says in verse 23, after they had been severely flogged, they were thrown into prison. Okay, this is Paul and Silas. And the jailer was commanded to guard them carefully. When he received these orders, he put them in the inner cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. At about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying, and they were singing hymns to God. And the other prisoners 
were listening to them. Suddenly there was a violent earthquake, that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and all at once the prison doors flew open, and everyone's chains came loose. The jailer woke up, and when he saw the prison doors open, he drew his sword and was about to kill himself because he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul shouted, Don't harm yourself. We are all here. The jailer called for the lights, rushed in, and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He, he then brought them out and asked, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they replied, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. So, when you hear that, what do you hear? Or let me put it this way. What do you see in that portion of Scripture? And like I said before, I've seen many things. But when I look at it now, I see the undeniable power of praise. I see praise that has got the power to open prison doors, to release captives, and you facing a situation where you are captive right now. You know what? If you got a problem and it's called self-esteem, why don't you praise Jesus for who he is and who you are in him? If your problem is addiction, why don't you praise Jesus for who he is and the power that he's got to break every chain? If you've got a power, if you've got a problem with, with a job, why don't you praise Jesus and ask him to provide because he says he will take care of our needs. And so we go on and on and on. When we've got a problem, we need to praise. And that is why today is called the power of praise. You see, praise should become a problem for your problem. Your problem must hear your praise and want to flee. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, what I've learned is that when the night is the darkest, then that is when we've got to be praising the loudest. Did you hear that? When the night is the darkest, it's then that we've got to be praising the loudest. Look at Paul and Silas. I mean, they were flogged. They were beaten. They were put into the worst section of the prison. Um, and there they were stuck. And what do they do? They start to praise. So what is your prison? What is your situation? Why are you letting yourself and your, your praise be captured? You see, you might be physically in a situation, but spiritually you've got the world's freedom to praise in that moment. And this is what we've got to do. We've got to get to that place where, where we start singing. You see what, what, what happened here, and this, this is exciting. They got a situation but they are praising God. And all the other prisoners with them are listening. They're all exposed to the praise to God, and they get blessed because of these two men who refuse to let the situation overcome them. They get blessed because these men praised God, and the prison doors were flung open. And that is because praise as influence, because praise has got power. I want to tell you that, and I want to be honest with you, before I started recording this, I was feeling a little bit down and, you know, not really, I can't say in the mood, but I wasn't feeling like I usually feel. So I was walking around the church and I'm singing that little song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I, I love that. You've heard me sing it before. And so I was just singing that and just lifted my spirit. It's like I invited Jesus in and say, Lord, I want to do honor to you. 
So it just lift me up, and I feel lifted up. I feel empowered to preach today, and you're going to hear a good word from God. So they are singing, and they are praising. Um, what would you have been doing? What would I have been doing? Mumbling and grumbling and thinking, this can't get any worse, and why me? And man, and these guys show us there's something else because they start praising and when they start praising the whole world starts shaking and you know what when we, 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 when when things start shaking that's when we start shining but we've got to be praising and we've got to break open these things in our life because we are praising God and bringing him into them imagine now the power of praise when when people come together, if we all come as the body of Christ and we really just praise God with freedom, imagine what he could do in the house of the Lord and what he can do in the people who are in the house of the Lord or who make up the house of the Lord. So I believe we need a, a freedom in praise and worship. And I'm not talking, when I talk praise, I'm not talking just only what we do in church, not only singing the fast songs. It's a lot more than that. It is much deeper than that. So let's take, <coughs> excuse me. Let's take a look at how this, this jailer reacts. Now you've got to understand, um, the jailer is his responsibility. It's his livelihood. If people escape, he's going to be killed. And he knows this. So when this commotion erupts and he sees that the doors are open, he assumes that they've escaped and they won. And his first instinct is, well, I'm not going to let them kill me. I'd rather do it myself. So he takes his sword and is about to kill himself. And Paul shouts out, whoa, stop, stop. We are all here. Don't kill yourself. You see, this guy was Paul's enemy. Um, jailers were known to be very vindictive, uh, evil people, and they would do their utmost to inflict even more pain on you. And it was likely when, when I mean, first of all, he selected the worst part of the jail, the inner court, to put Paul and, and, and Silas in. And it's likely that when he fastened them in the stocks, you know, you make it really tight so it's painful and probably pushed them and slapped them around a bit. And yet, because Paul has been praising, an enemy becomes a friend and he wants to help him. He wants to spare him. So Paul sure shouts out, stop. You see the knock-on effect of praise? When, when we get, when we got a problem and, and we've got the situation and we start praising, it is going to influence people beyond us. When they see how you as a believer respond to the pressure of life, they are going to be impacted. This jailer looks at Paul and at Silas and he realizes, there's something different about these guys. There's something that they got that I need. And immediately, and we don't know how, this is probably the Holy Spirit, he realizes he needs this Jesus that they were singing to. And he says to them, how do I get Jesus? And Paul answers, well, you just call on his name and you believe in him and you and your household will be saved. There was no altar call. There was no piano music in the background. There was no, you've got to <coughs> do sorry, this first or that first or do this course. Paul says to him in plain old language, man, you just got to belong. And how do you belong? You believe in Jesus. He didn't say you first got to repent, you first got to do this. And as a church, we need to get people to belong first. Then they encounter Jesus and they start to believe. And once they believe, the Holy Spirit 
helps them behave. And this is what Paul says to him. Just feel like you belong, that this is somewhere you want to be. You want to be with Jesus. You want to be with us. I love it how it just comes out, how that a, a song, a praise to the Lord, brings this t- tremendous ripple effect, even into this guy's home. So, what if Paul and them didn't feel like praising, like we often do? What if he, he, he thought, well, this isn't a place to worship God. This isn't a situation w- that I can praise for. I just, you know what, I don't feel like it today. Um, I don't feel like it this morning. Uh, just let me be. You see, if you had that attitude, you'd still be in the jail. And I want to tell you, you mustn't let your feelings uh, impact the possibility of the power of God radically transforming your situation. It's not about how you feel. It's about praising God becoming a priority in your life, despite circumstances. You see, if you would just look back and you see how God has always been there for you. You see how God has helped you, how He has been faithful to you. You've got reason to praise despite how you feel. I, I, I'm, I'm hearing about people say, you know, things are so bad, I don't want to go to church. I don't want to go to my life group. I don't want to hear Christian music and I'm not reading my Bible. And when things are at their worst, when the night is the darkest, you've got to be praising the loudest. That's the time to connect closely to God and to the body of Christ. Read a psalm back to God. Tell God how grateful you are for waking you up. You see, God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that whosoever, and we are the whosoevers, so that we can have life. And because we are whosoever, we have got reason to praise God. So have that whosoever say, that's me, Lord. Just because of that one fact, I've got reason to praise you. And you know what, Lord? I'm going to get a little bit undignified in our praise you. I'm going to dance around my house. I'm going to lift my hands in church. I'm going to shout hallelujah. I'm going to give an amen. I'm going to do what I need to do to glorify your name. Sometimes we can become so professional in our Christianity that we we lose the joy of the Lord and the joy of praising God. And if you're feeling a little bit professional in your Christianity, I hope your desperation for the things of the Lord has been stirred and you're getting that joy in your step again and you're getting a wiggle in your hips again because you have realized I need to praise God with everything that is within me. In fact, in Psalm 34, it says this, I will praise my God at all times, not when I feel like it, at all times, in all situations. So, sometimes I guess we forget that God is alive. And because He's alive, He's worthy of praise. He's not a dead God, a foreign God. He's a a God that is alive and He's a God that is known and He's a God that is worthy of praise. Aren't you just so blessed to be able to say these truthful words, my God's not dead. He's alive and He's worthy of my praise. So, there are Many, many, many reasons to praise God. Now, I just want to share two with you today. The first one is you can praise Him because He's already done more than you think He has. He's already done more than you think He has. He is so powerful. He is so faithful. He is so unbelievable. And He's done more already than you think. I want you to like Ostinana, just think back how faithful he was then and how faithful he was 
there. And if he was faithful then and there, surely he'll be faithful to you now because he's God and he does not lie. He's the Alpha, the Omega. He's everything, but he will be with you. You just need to look for him and he'll be there. Do you, do you think that Paul and Silas knew what God was going to do. You see, they had no idea. And you got no idea. But what you do have an idea about of who God is, he wasn't, they didn't go in thinking, all right, we're just going to lie down in these stocks. We're going to choose a song and we're going to start singing to God or we're going to start reciting his goodness. This wasn't part of of their plan. They didn't think we're going to do this, the, we're going to feel a shaking and then the doors are going to fly open and all these chains are going to pop off. They just did in a situation that they felt was best and they started praising God and God did the rest. You see, you yourself are stuck in some kind of prison with your situation and you get to choose how you're going to respond. Are you going to praise God despite what's happening? Are you going to praise God because you want Him to work in your life? Or are you simply going to praise God because He is God? You see, your motive must be right. You want to honor God. You want to glorify God. And when you do that, I promise you God is faithful. God has never failed anybody. And God is not going to fail you. The one who created the stars is the one who's going to make a way for you. The problem is we first want to run to all these other things and talk about stars. We go to our star signs, our horoscopes. What does it say? Am I going to be okay? Man, what a load of baloney. Or we run to the lotto or we, or we run to wherever we run to instead of praising God. And if you feel yourself being overwhelmed, if you, if you feel yourself, yourself being drowned in the world and in, in all your problems, remember how faithful God has been. He was faithful there and he'll be faithful now. He's going to move you forward. And you can either be miserable and get stuck or you can be joyful and move. That you get to choose. And I want you to be free from this situation. So I'm going to ask you, start praising God for the things He is going to do and for the things He's already done. Point number two. You can praise God because He's going to do more than you think He is going to do. He's going to do more than you think is going to do. Okay, let me. Th this is this is exciting, and 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 someone needs to hear this. You see, in your family, um, he's going to do more in your family than you think. He's going to enter in some powerful way. You've been praying for certain things, and he's going to go beyond your prayers and change and touch many more people. You think that in the situation you're in. Um, is going to help you just survive, but God's going to be, go beyond survival into revival in that area where your problem is. And I want to give you scripture to back up what I'm saying. Ephesians 3.20 says, God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or imagine or think according to his power that is at work in you. Do you get this? He's able to do exceedingly abundantly above measure according to his power that is at work, already at work, already at work in you. Now Paul and, Paul and um, Silas, sorry, um, I forgot for a minute there who his sidekick was, Silas. Do you, can you imagine them walking out of that jail thinking, man, look at this. Can you believe how good God is? Not only 
did God get us out of prison, okay? But the jailer got saved. And now we're on the way to his house. You know what happens there? His whole family gets saved. They actually end up planting a church in Antioch. Can you, can you imagine them walking out and think, wow, God, and we just wanted to get out of jail and you've gone beyond measure. So, where does this leave us? Paul and Silas were out of prison because of praise. They praised and God took part, took care of the problem. And this is what I want to leave you with today. You need to learn to praise. And you need to stand back and watch God take care of the problem. He'll ask you to do things and you be obedient. But generally, you just give in to praise. And you keep faithful. And you keep your faith in the one who is faithful. And you'll see a breakthrough. So I want to ask you that you right now in your home start praising God. You get out a song, you get out a psalm. I don't know what you want to do, but you need to get undignified and you need to let your little, your Christian little hair down and you need to start honoring and glorifying and praising God and start making that a lifestyle and you're going to see the prison doors fly open and the chains come off and God's provision flood your life. Just allow God to do what God is able to do. But praise God because of what is done and what is going to do. Amen. Lord, we come before you and we thank you on this Father's Day that we got the Father in heaven, the one who is worthy of praise. And I pray, Lord, that as the praises go up, your power comes down and every need of these your people are met. Lord, you know our situations. You know who needs what. As we praise you, we thank you. There's power in praise, and the power that is at work in us is busy working out solutions for our problems. We glorify you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Man, let's praise God. He is worthy of our praise.